Welcome to Books in the World, a program focusing on the world of ideas as they are captured in books. Presented by the Cape Cod Writers Conference and highlighting noted authors, journalists, publishers, and editors. Your host is Marion Villamir, author, editor, book reviewer, and executive director of the Cape Cod Writers Conference. It's a delight to have in our studio today a woman who is an artist, who is competent in many crafts, and who's an accomplished cook. Our guest is Susan Branch, an inveterate quotation collector, a calligrapher, and who's combined all these gifts in the production of a wonderful new cookbook. And I really do mean wonderful new cookbook, Susan, because at this point, I have never seen one done exactly this way. Maybe there have been cookbooks like this, but this book, Heart of the Home, Notes from a Vineyard Kitchen, is done, folks, all entirely by Susan. The artwork, the printing, the recipes, the whole work. So let's take a look at it before we get too far. Susan, this was quite a production. Did you really realize what you were getting into when you started? <laughs> I don't know if I really thought about it too much. I enjoy doing it so much that it, it, I didn't think about what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> what a lot of work. There's uh, loads of pages in here, and uh, uh, it's your first book, isn't it? Yes, that's my first book. Uh -huh. Now mm -hmm. tell me how it began. Well, it began when I started doing, um, I've painted for a few years, and I started for my friends giving them gifts of recipe cards with little pictures and little um, borders and things on them in these little wooden boxes and I would give, the, give them to them for um, like wedding presents and things like that and one day my girlfriend Jane said you've got to do a book and I thought oh I can't do a book <laughs> <laughs> but as time went on I thought I can to do a book so I finally decided to try. Ah, and it's a wonderful production. I think we should now show you a couple of interiors. Now, let's see what would be a good one. I'm just going to do it like this. Have you got a suggestion of a page that yeah, would be good? I think so, at the end of main dishes. All right. There's one that's uh, really, this one is oh, a nice one. Oh, I should one. say so. <laughs> this is my grandma's turkey stuffing, and we've got grandma's kitchen here. Well, so intricate, Susan. You, you do a very detailed type drawing. Yes, I have a lot of patience, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it must take a long time to do a painting like that with all those black and white squares on the floor. It does. And look at that border at the top. It's got uh, all kinds of little doodads in it and, even, <laughs> and little tiny marks. Now, were these all done this size or were they done big and reduced? No, everything, each page was done just as you see it, all the same size. and. Um, because I don't, I, I, since I've never done anything like this before, I didn't really realize you could do all this reduction, you know, or, or making it bigger or so forth. So I just did it when I started it. I didn't have anybody to ask questions about it. So I just started doing it the way that I thought it should be done, uh -huh. which was one page at a time. Yeah, so and the production, of course, uh, you, you had an idea of size of how you wanted it. I knew so what on. size I wanted it to be. I just picked from another book, you know, I thought this is a good size for a book, so. Why did you decide to do the calligraphy uh, just like this rather than have it set in type? Because I want it to be um, a personal expression, and I, and I always think, like, if I get a type letter from a friend, I can't read as much into it as when I get a, a, a letter written in their handwriting. Yeah, I suppose. I can yeah. tell something from, about <laughs> them from their handwriting, and that's what I wanted for my book. I see. I don't know how you could keep everything in a line. Did you did you have lines and then oh, yeah. erase the lines afterward? First I would write the whole thing on, first I would make lines in pencil. Yeah. Then I would write the whole thing in pencil because I can't even spell refrigerator, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> and then make, to make sure I did it right. And then I'd go all over it in pen and ink and paint in the paintings. Yeah. And then I'd wait for it to dry. Sometimes I didn't wait long enough and that would be horrible. <laughs> and then I would erase it. I see. So that all the pencil would come yeah. off. Is this done on boards or on paper? It's done on paper. It's almost the same kind of paper the cookbook is done out of. Oh, and this is kind Practically of thick. The, yeah. uh -huh. Uh, what's it called? Vellum or something like oh, that. Oh, vellum. I yeah, I know about that. Yeah. Here's a lovely one. Let's look at the uh, opening of it, the heart of the home. Notes from a Vineyard Kitchen. Little Brown is the publisher. Oh, and I want to hear about how you got to Little Brown because I've done books and I take in pictures and typed copy and then they produce the book. 
So I want to know how you interested somebody in doing this, which is entirely different. Which is so much better, too, because I would have felt terrible to turn over all my things to somebody. <laughs> I would <It's> live, <laughs> want to definitely do it myself. Yeah. Well, I live on Martha's Vineyard, which is a wonderful place uh, for writers and artists. There's lots of them, writers and artists and celebrities and mm. movie stars and people who are famous and people who aren't so famous, but um, a lot of creative people out there. Mm. And uh, when I started doing the book, I didn't know anybody uh, who could help me or answer my questions or anything. But when I finally got 50 pages done, which was what I thought I should have in order to have something to show the, mm -hmm. uh, a, a publisher, I started taking around to my girlfriends and say, what do you think of this? And she, this one girl thought, oh, I love it. And she said, I know a man who used to work for Little Brown, and I'll call him and see if he'd be interested in looking at it. So she did, and he came over to my house, which was so nice, he went out of his way, and he loved it, and he wrote the president of Little Brown, and they called me and made an appointment, and I took it in and I sold it. It was so easy, and I think it's oh. more this vineyard makes it, just because they help each other out there. Uh -huh. They really do, they take an interest in, in other people. Mm -hmm. Now, when we were at a book signing the other day, you were telling me a little, also, that you had tried one other publisher, mm -hmm. and they had, uh, um, they they couldn't make a decision because you wouldn't leave it overnight. Is it? <laughs> Tell me about that. that. I thought that was funny. <laughs> it was the first place I'd gone to. Uh, it was to Random House in New York City, and you know I had my original. You couldn't very well Xerox this book and no. just mail off pictures no, because couldn't. it wouldn't it wouldn't show what was, which, what what it was about. So I had to take it. So I went to New York, and that alone is already <laughs> the buildings there yeah. are pretty amazing. So. Um, I went there and I was a nervous wreck and, and the women that looked at it the, uh, loved it. They were really wonderful. They were great. And they, um, But then they asked me if I would leave it and I said no because I couldn't leave my original artwork and everybody said don't leave it anywhere. So I thought okay, I'm not going to. And, and with the, the thing is, is I, I didn't realize, I didn't think, you know, I thought maybe they could just make a decision but I guess there's the committees and oh, things. Oh, let you me know. tell you about this, Susan, because I've been through this and the folks out there will get a chick out, uh, will live. Uh, know that I'm getting a kick out of this because nowadays in order to get a book done you have a committee and so you have to have um, three, three out of four people, the marketing director, uh, the sales director, the acquiring editor, and the head editor, see? <laughs> and three of those have to make a decision or you don't publish the book. So naturally, if you couldn't leave it, they couldn't bring it to the committee. No, but they didn't, they, they, they didn't actually tell me that. I think they were shocked, you know, and I was just, you know, Taking my book, I'm going home. <laughs> but fortunately, so, yes. you got a call. While I was in New York, yeah. my girlfriend was staying at my house on the vineyard, and um, Little Brown called there. Yeah. And then they called me in New York. So since I'd had such a good time in, at uh, Random House, and they were so nice to me and so positive, by the time I started talking to Little Brown, I knew just what I wanted. <laughs> <and> <laughs> I was real, real tough about the whole thing. Now, they're in Boston, aren't they? <laughs> yes, yeah. which is really great, too, yeah. because this yeah. thing had to be transported back and forth, you know. Oh, yeah. And you to New York, to that to UPS. Know, <laughs> heaven forbid. <laughs> we got pretty brave towards the end. We, yeah. we, at first, we were using people to deliver it, but after a while, we're just here, it's overnight mail, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to tell about one more thing, now that we got a little bit of the nitty-gritty out of the way, folks. By the way, how much does this cost, Susan? Uh, it's in the bookstores for $17.95. $17.95. The perfect Christmas present. And it is a perfect, <laughs> well, it's a, good, it's a good Easter present. It's a good any, any year present. Valentine's <laughs> present, right. Okay, now what I wanted to say is that somewhere in here, she's got some extra things. You think you're just getting a cookbook, folks? No, you're not. You're getting all kinds of other things, like... Here, for example, on this page is a quotation. She's great on quotations, this gal. And here it is, a quotation from Gladys Tabor. April in New England is like first love. I understand you have quotations all over the house. I do. Well, not all over the house. I have them. I, I paint them over the doorways in my house. You, you know, mean right um, on the wall? Right on the wall. Oh. Just do a little calligraphy, but bigger than this, obviously. Uh -huh. But so uh -huh. you can read them. Things that keep me going sometimes, you know, <laughs> to remind me everything's going to be all right. <laughs> and I put them on my paintings, and, uh -huh. and, and I just write, keep books of them and uh -huh. stuff. Okay. Now, also, folks, in addition to quotations, she has a few other lovely things like, well, this is tradition, uh, things to do in your house. This one is have a guest book in your house, ask for names, quotes, uh, 
put bells on the bread basket with an arrow ribbon so they have a nice Christmas sound at Christmas. Don't you want to see this tradition page? I know you can't read it, but probably, but it will give you an idea of all the other little goodies that are in this book. What other odds and ends do you have in this book? Um, well, besides traditions, which I think we're losing a little bit nowadays, and that's what I talk about in uh -huh. this, how to get them a little bit back. Yeah. Um, I talk about breakfast in bed. Oh, <laughs> nice. Is, tell about a, a little story about that. I talk about a come-as-you-are party, uh, kind of a party that my parents used to have when we were kids. <laughs> you can imagine what that's about. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, I talk about Easter egg coloring party, uh, that you uh -huh. color Easter eggs with uh, watercolors uh -huh. and stuff. Different different little, little ideas. Um, a lobster boil on the beach. Give you different ideas to do about things to do at home and entertaining. And did and you mention Easter? I think I saw mm -hmm, some. Yeah, you mm -hmm. did. Easter yeah. egg coloring party. Easter egg party. coloring right. party, yeah. Well, that will give you an idea, folks, of uh, what's in this book. So it's, it's really a fun book to read, even if you don't cook, I think, because I don't cook that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so my family's all grown in a way. But um, another thing intrigued me about this book, and I think we should talk a little bit about the public relations people that are behind you, because not everybody has, is lucky enough to have a public relations uh, firm that uh, is uh, available for, uh, to make you, uh, you're known. I mean, most of us just have these books and we just hope for the best. So, what I'd like to know is, how did you get this public relations firm? Because folks, you see, the reason I knew about it is I had a call from Lisa Ekus Public Relations Company, who, by the way, when we had agreed on this uh, arrangement, sent me this confirmation card. Now, I think that's pretty neat. So I said, how did she get a public relations firm? Did she pay for it? So did you? No. Little Brown found them and gave them to me as a present. Oh. <laughs> so Lisa, what do they do for you? Lisa is one of the most interesting people I've met. She's, um, it's three women who work out of her house. She has a little baby. Which is where? Uh, up in um, Western Mass. Uh -huh. And she has a baby, so she's she has someone take care of the baby in another part of the house, and she has this business going. And they are so excited about everything. Uh -huh. They're so interested in everything uh -huh. that they, they're, you know, it's infectious. They yeah. call you constantly with the new things that are happening and the things that they're doing for you. They send out uh, books. Um, my book to uh, different places like newspapers. Oh, that's and how I got it. You see, right? sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they contact uh, different people who might be interested in having me, like, come on and cook, or come on. I don't talk about the book. So um, she's even doing something now. She's she's acting like an agent for me. Good. She, there's a new product coming out that's uh, like a French liqueur. We don't know the name of it, uh -huh. so I guess it's all kind of hush hush. And they've asked her if they know, if she had some people that might be interested in being a spokesperson for that. Well, I yeah, know. Wouldn't Susan. that be interesting? Oh, no. that's like, it would be like for um, from one to five years, and it would be uh, 20 cities a year, and it's doing commercials, and they train you, and it's just it sounds really interesting to me. <laughs> oh, I mean, isn't that yeah. Right. I thought that was, so that's something that I'm supposed to go to New York for next week to have an interview. Mm -hmm. So, Lisa, I don't know, I don't know uh, why you get this nice thing to happen to you. I don't know what I did to deserve it, but I do feel really. Well, I think you're wonderful. Lisa's to have even it. Yeah. come out to my house. Has she really? Yeah, she's taken yeah. the time to come out yeah. to see my house and see yeah. where I come from and took me out to <laughs> breakfast one day and I met her well, husband. They're, they're doing one more thing for you, too, mm -hmm. and I think I should tell the folks about this. Because this happens uh, with other folks on the guests on the show, they're having a copy of this tape made to use as an interview, sort of as an audition for larger television shows. So you see, you might she may end up in Phil Donahue show just because oh, she has an audition no. on this show. <laughs> oh, it's just well, anyway, we have a lot Don't of fun talking me. about it. <laughs> However, My hands let's were move just on to because dry off. <laughs> we have now some nice paintings to show you. Because you see, in her other life, she paints. <laughs> And we're going to talk about that. And I think we do have some nice paintings here. And I'd like to first talk about the cat painting. Tell me about that. Well, I had two cats at the time that, that I painted that. And one was a white cat and one was a yellow cat. I'm, an untr I'm, a, I'm not a... I never took any art lessons. Well, tell so, us how you got into it then. I thought that was an interesting thing I heard you say at the at the literary breakfast the other day. Yeah. Oh, well. Somebody gave you a present? Somebody gave me a gift certificate to an art store, and I went down and bought um, watercolors and started painting. And I just it just went really well. I sold started selling them right away, and 
it's just been something that I love to do. I just wish I would have known I could do it earlier. <laughs> I'd have more of these things. But um, anyway, those, that cat there is actually a white cat with my yellow cat's, it's the white cat's face with my yellow cat's <laughs> color because yeah. I didn't know how to paint white at the time. And up in my basket of quilts and then, um, so uh, little and, quote now this on there. this type of thing you would have on display. Where would you sell some of these paintings? Do you have an, are they in an art gallery someplace? Well, they used to be at the Edgartown Art Gallery on the Vineyard. They've been at the Red uh, Red the Staircase Red Staircase in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. but um, right now they're on my walls only. <laughs> <laughs> now you brought us also. Uh, let's see. We're going to talk about the teddy bear next. Mm -hmm. All right. That's cute. That that would be nice for a child's room. You've right. got the ABCs and the one, two, threes. And, yeah, right. And it, everybody loves a teddy bear. That's right. Yeah. It's my, my best girlfriend's daughter's teddy bear. She finally gave it to me because I'd borrowed it for so long, she grew <laughs> out of it. <laughs> but And I still have them, Ted. Ted. I got well, them at home. A, that's an interesting name. Yeah, well, it's real original. Right? Yes, There's right. another painting just like this where he's upside down, and it's called Ted on His Head. <laughs> I was going to do Ted in bed, <laughs> dead Ted, <laughs> but I decided just to bring you one today. Uh, okay. Now, we've got another painting over there. I love that quilt. Did you make that quilt? No, actually, I didn't make but that But you do quilt. make quilts, don't you? I have made quilts in the past, uh, yes, but now that I've learned to paint, it's so much faster than making quilts, I'd rather paint them. <laughs> uh -huh. But um, that one... That one was a real killer. I didn't realize it when I was doing it, but all those tiny little cranberries and the lace on the napkin and the little tiny apples and all that oh. stuff on there and the corn. Uh, it was my first visit to a chiropractor took place right <laughs> after that, that painting. How long would it take you to do something like that? That took a long time. I think that took probably a week or a week and a half. Oh, gosh, it would take me a month or a uh, month and a yeah. half. Well, I've, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty, you know, you do all that little gingham and stuff. But I, I like to do it. I enjoy it, so that that really definitely helps. How do you how do you manage your time? You obviously have to do artwork and you do some cooking. Do you do the what do you do first thing in the morning? What do you need most of your energy for? Most of my energy, hmm, errands probably. <laughs> <laughs> now that's just getting away from the desk. Yeah, you know, that's it's what an it excuse. is. It is an excuse. Okay. But it, it, my art, getting myself to sit down to it, is uh, sometimes after doing the book which I sat for months and months and months like this. Like how many months? Well, I sold it last November, and I had a due date of April 30th, so I had been doing it, you know, at my own pace ahead of that uh -huh. time, but I had to do like 100 and, 100 and, I don't know, 20 pages between November and April, and if you think about how many actual days there are between there, mm. there it wasn't a lot of time. I got up at 4.30 in the morning, but I was so excited I couldn't help myself. My mm -hmm. foot would start wiggling, and I'd just all of a sudden, I'd be up and get up, you know, up that and early and go could, straight to the table. How long could you work? I worked 14 hours. Really? Yes, and oh, they were building on oh. my house, too, while this was going on. So, uh. like, every wall in my house had been moved, and it was all <laughs> coming around me, <laughs> and I'm sitting there in my sweatpants and my <laughs> sweatshirt painting this thing. It was, uh -huh. it was uh, an interesting time. Speaking of this thing, I think it's time to show it again. And I like, I like the. Uh, let me see. What shall we show? I had a favorite one marked here, and I've lost it. Which one is it? Uh, well, it was had a lot. Well, I like this one because we live in the whale place. So here's <laughs> steamed Chinese dumplings with a whale at the bottom. We haven't got a lot of gingham whales, but no, we don't have gingham whales. <laughs> but, in our imagination. Uh, yeah, but that's nice. Well, that's a good thing about artists and writers. They can use a lot of imagination. That's, you know, that's, that's the our best stock and Allowing trade. yourself to run free with it is the hardest thing because if you realize that anything is possible in your imagination, yeah. then you, you... When do you stop? Just, well, it's, it's, it's being able to let yourself have anything, you know? <laughs> that's the hard thing because you, you set your own limits sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think you grow up in a very realistic world and you think of imagination as being something that goes with childhood mm -hmm. and I think people tamper it down and they especially if they think they want to write now I speak from the writing angle mm -hmm. you, you have a hard time getting people to let themselves go and make up things Be they free. say yeah but that isn't really real and I said well you don't have to have it real. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, it has to have. It has to be based in reality. Mm -hmm. Emotion, people be... that people can identify with. Right. On the other hand, sky's the limit. You're right. That's right. And I'm thinking about maybe writing a novel someday. Lately, uh -oh. I've been really thinking there about. There you are. So as I read, you as I read it. now, <laughs> I suddenly look at uh, characters and the things that they do, and I go, 
he can do that, you know? <laughs> and then you, it, it's true. It's, it's hard to remember that, that you're in charge. Yeah. You can make him do what you want. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. Now, uh, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned um, other work. Now, I, have you actually begun on anything new, a new project of any sort? Well, I'm thinking about an inn out, uh, maybe doing a country inn. I want to call you, it a You mean hugs. actually buying it and, and no, running it? I'm building it, too. Building mm -hmm. it. Well, and what are you going to call it? The Hearts Home Inn, <laughs> if I do it. It's a dream right now. I basically have to wait and see how the, how the book goes and so forth and see. I, it's hard to think about having it on Martha's Vineyard because Martha's Vineyard is not year-round, a year-round place. Mm -hmm. And I want a year-round business. I want not a business, but I want people in my life. Writing this book all alone is not a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm used to I'm the oldest of eight children, and I'm used to having noise in the house. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is write my book, paint my paintings, and have all these nice people come through and say hi and eat my food. And are you I, talking great. about a bed and breakfast? Yes, like an inn. Only I'd run it like a hotel. Big bathrooms and little. They'd even have little TVs. I wouldn't cut them off from the rest oh. of the world. And well, when you have it, let me know. I think it would be I a will. nice place to. Escape. I think about three years. Oh, it's going to be the coziest thing you've ever oh, seen. Isn't that <laughs> exciting? But you know, folks, she's done some other interesting things. She wrote me a long letter telling about herself, and I looked, I said, I can't believe this. She played with baby lions. <laughs> How did you play with baby lions? Well, when I was 19, I met the, uh, I met the uh, wild animal trainer for the Tarzan show. And That's right. You grew up in California, yes, where yes. all those things well, can happen. Yes, down in Los Angeles. <laughs> and um, I was only 19, and I went down to Mexico City with him and lived with his family for three months and went to the studios every day and watched them film this thing. Oh. So it wasn't just baby lions. There were cheetahs and 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 Bengal tigers. Really? And, well, I didn't get very close to any of those. Um, I wouldn't think so. Chimpanzees and things. And But the baby, baby, baby lions were like at the size of small dogs. They were the most adorable things. Oh. You know, we each had one. They were twins, you know. We'd, <laughs> we'd take them in the car with us and really? practically cause accidents on the freeway. <laughs> oh, and take them home and play with uh -huh. them. They were adorable. Uh -huh. If uh -huh. they could just stay that size. Yeah, yeah, I see. There was must have come a time when they didn't... Uh, you couldn't have them with no, you. No, no, it was goodbye. They had these claws, and yeah. they were out of control. They were babies, you know, yeah, so yeah. you didn't want them, you know, near your shoes or yeah. near food. Or uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, Susan, you've really had some experiences. But I'd like to come back to the book now because uh, we still haven't talked about a couple of other things, and that is what happens to a book when it gets out. And that's what Susan's just finding out, and I'm just finding out from her. And I was real pleased to see that they have, the uh, publishers have taken a very nice uh, ad. It, was it in New England Monthly? Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. They did a, a, a darling ad in there. Um, it's a picture of the book, of the cover of the book, and it said, the homemade book that's winning the hearts of America. Well, now, I, mean, I who like could ask for that. anything more? <laughs> I like that. And yeah. they put it in People Magazine and Newsweek and The New Yorker. So um, Newsweek and The New Yorker haven't been in yet, but th this next couple of weeks, I think mm -hmm. that's when it's supposed to mm -hmm. come out. So they've been real, real nice to me, I, I think. I just want you to know that uh, that is not usual. Normally, a publisher will take uh, one or two ads in, like, a food place or something, and... Um, but uh, but to do a large thing means that they've decided that this is going to go big. So what they do is they take every book for that spring or that fall list and do a little bit of an ad here, you know, two or three things. And then they save most of their money for the one that's going to go big. So I'm cluing you in. I think they think this is going to go big. Good. <laughs> I would love <laughs> Maybe that. Maybe you'll get your in a before little sooner you know. than I <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That'd be nice. All right. Now, uh, let's talk about a couple of other things uh, in the process because there are people out here who always want to know a process. We talked a little bit about what you did. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm familiar with writing, I mean, reading a proof. But you didn't have a proof. In other words, when mm -hmm. you sent these pages in, let's show another page just for fun. T look at the, look at the uh, calligraphy in here. Now, you sent a page in. That looked exactly like, like, like that. Like that. All right. Exactly like that. Now, this has to go... This has to be copy edited. In mm -hmm. other words, they have to check everything. Right. Now, they obviously couldn't send sheets back to you, I mean copies. They had to send this back to you, and you had to fix anything. Right. So how did that work? Well, I, would, I did it, and I and, um, sent it to them, and then they would... Um, 
But they couldn't mark on it. No, they would Xerox it. Yeah. Because that's all they needed to see was the words. They yeah. would Xerox it. I would send it in a little um, plastic envelope yeah. down in there. And then they would Xerox it right through the plastic envelope, never take it out because it's watercolors if anybody spits or something. Yes. You mean every page went to them in a plastic envelope? Yes, every page Phew. went to them in a plastic envelope. Okay. And um, then they'd Xerox it, and then they'd send it to the um, edit the editors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they would copy fix editor. It. Right. And so they would all fix different the kinds spelling. of editors. The copy editor would be at this point. Yeah. Right. They would fix the spelling and fix the um, the the uh, grammar or whatever I would do wrong and then send it back to me with the original and then I would have to do white out. You'd have to take it out and fix whatever is right. necessary. And I tried so hard not to. Sometimes though they didn't understand since they had not worked with the book like this. <laughs> yes. And they'd want Speaking me to move Speaking of the book, things. we want to put it on camera while you're uh -huh. talking. Heart of the home. Uh, so they didn't want to what? Sometimes they wouldn't understand that this was in watercolor, this wasn't a typewriter that you could have a race on or something. And they'd want me to move things like, could you move that basket over to the right just a little bit? And I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, it's uh -huh. just, but um, we got along pretty well. I didn't know how to, I just, refrigerator, we always said fridge, and I always thought there was a D in refrigerator, and there wasn't, <laughs> so that was my big, you had my a, big had terrible fix word. All that. Yeah. And you didn't have a word processor that says, no. that says search, <laughs> press a button, and would fix it. No, no. no. Uh, one more question, Susan. From the time you sent it in to the time it was published, how many months? Well, I, 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 they decided to, to do it last November, and it was published. It actually came out, I'd say, about a month ago, a month oh, no, and so a half wait a ago. Now, let's November. Let's, let's because this is it's this like eleven show, months. Show shows several times, so let's right. figure out. Oh, eleven months. Mm -hmm. It was due April thirtieth. Yeah. I sold it in November. It was due April thirtieth. I had my part done by April thirtieth. Well. I mean, you the turned in your finished do. manuscript. No, because then they had to help me with the index, and they had then oh, they yeah. wanted then oh, we had to I do see. cover, and we had to do the spine, and do the back, and all oh, the things. Oh yeah, and that's right. And you had to do it all, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. And then they see how the little brown is, little tiny pen. Oh, really? <laughs> they like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know that you can even see that, but and it's we're ready. Tiny. Yeah, it's too tiny, I yeah. think. But anyway, I think that uh, th this points up the folks that there are all kinds of ways to make books, and I think Susan struck some new territories, both for the publisher and yourself. By accident. <laughs> By accident. Well, I think that's wonderful. And uh, now, I, are you doing any anything major, like in the in the art line? Just we have just a few sec few minutes left. I'm I'm about to start to put together a show for California, uh -huh. and that's what I'm thinking about doing. If I could get myself to sit back in that chair, I'm not looking forward to sitting down <laughs> again for a while. I kind of want to be up and about. I'm having a good time with this. Oh, that's Real great. Good time. Well, that's a good way to end an art show in California and a uh, a cookbook on Martha's Vineyard. You've got both ends of the country sewed up. Right, the best and, places. And uh, Susan, I want to say in closing that Edgar Guest, the American poet, wrote, things that haven't been done before, those are the things to try. Columbus dreamed of an unknown shore at the rim of the far-flung sky. We're very grateful to today's guest, Susan Branch, for attempting things not done before and succeeding mighty well. Well, thank you. That was so nice. <laughs> thank you for coming. And thank you for watching. This is Marion Villamia, hoping you'll be back with us again next week, same time, same channel, to meet another fascinating guest on Books and the World. Thank <music> you.